Hey everyone, what is going on with your day? My name is Tyler. I make videos about college career and Andrew Yang. And uh, I got some bad, but not terrible news. So the deadline for the January Democrat debate was last night. And unfortunately, Andrew Yang will not be joining the other six candidates up there on that debate stage. Now, as much of a disappointment this may be to us, um, it's by far not the end of the world just because when you really look into it further, you realize how much these qualifications and these polls are rigged for a candidate, candidate like Andrew Yang. But that is a topic for another day. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what we should do now that Andrew Yang has not qualified for the January debate. And if you can do me a favor and hit the like button to support my channel, that would be much appreciated. But without further ado, let's get on to the video. So if we really think about what Yang is missing out by not being on that debate stage, it is these three simple things. First, name exposure. Second, the ability or the opportunity rather to get viral content on social media. And thirdly, is the social validation. And I personally I feel like the social personally I feel like the social validation is the most important piece, but we'll get through it. So, so starting with the first benefit of being at the debate stage, and that is name exposure. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically people hearing about Andrew Yang for the first time, new or old voters or whoever it may be. And during a certain period of time, being on the debate stage was critical, was like the most important thing. If you weren't in every single debate, uh, forget about becoming president. And that's how it was in the past, but if we consider in today's age and the significance that the internet and social media has to allowing us to have a platform to connect and transfer ideas to each other, these debates are becoming less and less important. And we only have to look at the low relative viewership these debates have been getting, especially with the last one, December, getting just over 6 million views. Now, if you look at the viewership for Andrew Yang on, say, the Joe Rogan podcast, just something super unofficial and not tied to um, the current political uh, paradigm, we see that Andrew Yang on the Joe Rogan podcast has accrued 4.8 million views. Now, of course, uh, these views have been cultivated over a period of like six months, and people can rewatch these videos. But we need to remember that here is an outlet that gives Andrew Yang an opportunity to have long form conversations about his policies. So in my humble opinion, name exposure, which yes, while necessary for a successful campaign, can be supplemented elsewhere. It doesn't need to come from a debate stage. The next benefit I see is the opportunity for these candidates to go viral. Now, let's look at reality. Most people aren't gonna watch an entire two and a half to three hour long debate. Most likely, they're gonna be watching a highlight reel of the entire debate, or perhaps, I don't know, maybe a highlight of their favorite candidates, or maybe their favorite top three candidates, if they're open-minded, let's call it. So, from a quantitative perspective, the Twitter followers that Andrew Yang will get is like the biggest benefit Andrew Yang will have from being on the debate stage, which really isn't important at all. Because let's be honest, even when he's on the debate stage, he always has the lowest amount of speaking time. People generally are not even going to watch the entire debate, rather they're going to look up their favorite little candidate's highlight reel. So really the biggest little piece really are these Twitter followers. But now let's talk about the last benefits and by far the most important from a qualitative perspective and really overall the biggest benefits you have to being on the debate stage and that is the social validation you obtain from it now i'm gonna go on a limb and say that this um this kind of idea that we've set in society that you know a candidate needs to be on the debate stage in order to become president this is a complete fallacy in other words most people inherently have this stigma in other words most people inherently have this stigma that look if you're not on the debate stage you're not a serious contender how are you supposed to continue to further grow your campaign if you can't make these debates why should i even listen to you and think about this and thinking about it that would be pretty true if 
the means by which these qualifications are obtained were actually reliable. And newsflash, they're not. One, they heavily skew towards older people. Two, they don't account for first time voters, aka young people, or people changing parties. And three, the DNC has the supreme absolute right, kind of like a dictator, to dictate which polls qualify towards these debates and which do not. Ooh. But chances are, if you're watching this, this ain't new news. Y'all already know about this. So many people already know that these polls are rigged, yet why do we hold so much value in these debates despite us even knowing Despite the record low viewership, despite the fact that people don't even watch TV nowadays, and despite us knowing that these debates are rigged, man, there's someone pulling the strings in the background. And really, that's why this campaign, the Yang 2020 campaign, the Yang Gang are so inspiring because this is actually a movement from people, like actual, regular, genuine people, not like some cro not a bunch of cronies. And that alone is something to be proud of, you know, like we need to lead the way in evolving the current discussions being made by Americans on who could be president and what you need to do to become president. So now that you're inspired, what do we do? Well, we set the bar high in Iowa and we crush it. Think about it. If we're able to come top three in Iowa, despite not even being on the debate stage. That is gonna set a precedent for people to think, huh, one, maybe these debates aren't even that important, and two, who is this Andrew Yang guy that's actually making this possible? Millions of people around the country will be curious about Andrew Yang and look into him and wonder, how did this quote unquote fringe candidate inspire thousands of people to come caucus for him in Iowa without even being in the January debate? And then we move on to New Hampshire, to South Carolina. And then we're going to Washington, D.C. to take back the White House! Yeah! Jokes aside, if you want to help out in Iowa, please do. It would be integral for the Yang's success in Iowa. Now, if you want more information on that, don't ask me. I'm going to leave a link to Padgett, Keggy, and Kai Watson's channel. They know much more about that. In fact, they're doing that right now while I'm here sitting in my room doing nothing. Also, National Yang Gang. Cookie Day is next Monday on January 13th, two days before my birthday. I included a list of participating locations in the description below. I should be in one of them, so if you all want to see me, that'd be kind of weird, but that'll be cool at the same time. But with that said, hope y'all enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you want to support my channel, that would be much appreciated. Hit subscribe if you want to see more videos about College Korean Andrew Yang, and I'll see y'all in the next one and our National Cookie Day. Peace.